Let me tell y'all why he died. They said that in the store that he was in, they caught him with a fake or counterfeit $20 bill. That's why he was arrested. That was an allegation. They don't know. But that's why he's gone. That's why he's gone. He did not have to die behind an allegation. His day began probably like any other day. By the end of the day, he lay being choked to death by a white policeman who was using a legal tactic to subdue another human being. This officer and the others will be represented and defended by a team of lawyers who will say that what he did was within his duly authorized right. This tactic is taught in the Minneapolis Police Academy. Why do young black and brown people distrust the police? The video tells you why. When you look across America, one sees a nation whose people are plagued by a global pandemic while facing a, a hostile and host of social, economic, political injustices. Broken and dysfunctional families fill our communities and our churches. Financial hardships um, caused by unemployment and underemployment. Violent neighborhoods, gangs where murders and assaults are common and ongoing and it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. Those concerns. Across the globe, the problem are multiplied and seemingly without any solutions. One could almost reign, watch this, one can almost resign themselves to total despair and conclude that there is nothing to be done. Well, we reject the notion that life's problems are so great that it is futile to even conceive of trying to offer solutions. Here is the solution. James chapter 4 verse 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Hearing and applying the gospel has the power of transformation. And so the word of God clearly tells you here in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. It is the word of God that will help us uh, to get through these situations and to be transformed. You want healing in this country, and if you want healing globally, in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, I read it to you earlier, and this is where the church kicks in. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, will pray, will seek my face, this is drawing near to God, will um, uh, turn from their wicked ways, which is repentance. He says, then I will hear from heaven, which means I heard you. He says, then I will forgive your sins. I heard you. And then I will heal the land. I heard you. Thank you, Jesus. And so God is calling on us to preach the good news, to preach the gospel, to share the good news with the people that are hurting out here in the world. Doing the work of ministry is even more important now. This is the time to do it. Yes, sir. Because we will see God's justice come. Now, justice is a biblical term. Because only God can bring justice. Yes. Yeah. You will never get it from broken and, and messed up human beings. Yeah. And so all of us in some sense uh, should come before the Lord broken. Yes. That's why I love about David when David yes. uh, wrote Psalms 51. Yes. Create in me, Lord, a clean heart. Yes. And renew yes. within me a right spirit. Yes. Uh -huh. Give me the right attitude as I approach you. Give me the right heart to come into your presence. Yes. Yes. And God can use you. God loves a contrite and broken spirit. That's how we become transformed. That's how we become new. It's when we let the pride go. The reason why you see all this stuff going on in the world today is because humanity is prideful. You have to set the pride down. Put the pride aside. Because if you don't, God will never deal with you. Come on now. You gotta humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. He yes. said, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. And in due season, he will exalt you. He'll lift you up. You got to set the pride aside. That's what got Lucifer booted out of heaven. Can you imagine Lucifer? The morning star. The worshiper. At 
one who some theologians said, this German theologian said he could lift one wing and sweet music would come from it. Luther, he was the director, the music director of the heavenly host, the choir in heaven. Got kicked out of heaven. Why? It's because of his pride. And see, God ain't going to deal with your pride. If you're being proud, God ain't going to deal with it. He's just going to let you go to your own demise. Now, he'll put forth He'll put forth something. He'll do something to get your attention. Now, this is this should have gotten everybody's attention. Not just the racial discord and the prejudice, but the COVID-19. This should have everybody's attention. This should have everybody drawing near to God. This COVID-19, you know, God is not a social distance. God doesn't want to be six feet from you. He wants a personal relationship. But because of your pride, you might keep him at a distance. And that's what's happening to people. And that's why all this stuff is going on and all this chaos and confusion and all this stuff. But this stuff is written. You got to know it's in the Bible. And so let me talk about justice real quick. And then I'm close. Justice is a biblical term that first appeared in the Old Testament. The Hebrew word is tishdagoth, guf, and it means rightness or the act of doing right things. The word was used to define the ethical standards under which Hebrew society was to function, to function in righteousness or to do right things. We are to function as the church today in that ethical standard to do right things so that people can see the way that things are supposed to be done. This is what pleases God. But until we all come back to the creator who has given us a, a, a manual, a, a book of instructions yes, to follow yes, for our lives, to make our lives better on this planet, Amen. until we humble ourselves and put the pride aside and come to him, yeah. then we won't know it. Right. We'll always suffer and go through it. But justice will be carried out. Tishdak booth is a relational word that defines relationship between and among and between people and God. A just society is one in which everyone is treated equal and with fairness. And that's what real justice is. When everybody is treated fairly. When everybody is treated equal. You know, if you disrespect me, guess what? I'll probably turn around and disrespect you. But here's the Christian way. The Christian way is, if you disrespect me, then I should stoop to your level of ignorance and disrespect you. I should show you love. I should show you consideration. I should show some kind of compassion and concern. Because you're broken. Something's wrong. For you to even want to disrespect me and I haven't disrespected you. That's right. Amen. But that's what real justice is. It is when you are treated fairly and you are treated equal. And so we haven't seen that as a black people for years. We, we, we've always rise above the occasion. We've always been strong. That's why I believe that God is going to use black people to bring the Jews back to him. Because, you know, some of them are still racial. Some of them are still prejudiced. You know why? Because they're still looking for their Messiah. And he's already come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Woo! Yeah. But justice. God will bring justice. And that's what I told my daughter. My oldest daughter, I know she still struggles with the fact that the young boy, which was my nephew, killed my grandson, which they were cousins, and they were like brothers. She struggles with the fact that, you know, he's still on the land. He's never been caught. And so there's no closure for us concerning my grandson. But I always say this, ain't nobody marched for him. Ain't nobody marched for him when he was murdered in the streets of Norfolk back in 2012. Ain't nobody marched for him. And I'm not not marching or out there with the crowd because of that. I just, you know, this is my time to just kind of sit back and reflect. I, I've been teaching about this stuff for years. I've been talking about it for years. Stop the violence. Violence comes in many different forms. But, but this is what I told my daughter. 
God knows exactly where Trayvon is. Amen. Knows exactly where he is. Right. And when God gets ready to bring justice, he will bring yes. justice. Right. And he's not going to like that kind of justice. Not like our broken uh, societal justice. Because mm -hmm. our, our societal justice is broken. We see that. Yeah. With the police. Right. And thinking they can treat us any kind of way they want to treat us. We see that on the jobs. How many of y'all in here got jobs whereas you're not co-equal to your Caucasian counterpart? Mm. They might be making $10, $20 more than you, but you're doing the same job, and you're better qualified and more educated. Right. I'll wait for the eight minutes you got there. All yeah. that is going on, social yeah. economics. Yeah. But God will see you through. Yeah. And we've learned how to rise above that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you have to do. Amen. That's what you have to do. Yeah. And so social justice is not just about making sure that people have more money and better education. Mm -hmm. Rather, it is about ensuring that our society is fair to everyone. Yeah. 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 It's a just society. Yeah. It's one in which the values of our faith guide our treatment and response to all human beings. We seek a just society yeah. for all people mm -hmm. and for all Americans. And so Paul has said in this word, get the gospel out. Get the good news yeah. out. Preach the gospel in mm -hmm. season and out of season. The best thing you can do um, with all this social injustice and all that is not get, up, get mad and all upset uh, just because of uh, this uh, particular thing with George Floyd has happened. There's a whole bunch of people. There's a list of names that y'all haven't heard about. Right? There's a list of names of people that have died under the hands of the police or our government. There's a list of people. There's a list of names that you've never heard about and you won't ever hear about. But in due season, God will bring justice. He will bring justice to all this rhetoric. Yeah. He will bring justice to all this hurt and all yeah. this pain. He will bring justice. And when yeah. he brings justice, we want to be out of here. Yes, sir. Uh, we, yes, sir. Yes. we want to be wrapped up out of here. We want to be out of here. When God brings justice, it's going to be something that yes, we have sir. never seen in the lights of humanity. You know, I hear a lot of people saying all the time about this particular situation that has taken place. I've never seen nothing like this in my lifetime. I guess you have. That's right. And you probably won't ever see it again. But when God brings justice, it's going to be something like, you need to read Romans chapter 1, when the wrath of God is. See, the wrath of God is God's justice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. On one end of the, on 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 the uh, scale of balance, mm -hmm. on one end is justice. Yeah. On the other end is love, and in the middle is His holiness. Yeah. It balances out His justice and yeah. His love. And so, when God gets ready to send His wrath, mm -hmm. which is His justice, yeah. it could take out two hundred and fifty thousand people at one time. Woo. If y'all know anything about history, yeah. all you got to do is look back in 1918 in World War I when the Spanish flu came out. Yes, do you sir. know that Spanish flu took out over 25 million people? Mm -hmm. Global. Yeah. The Spanish flu. Mm -hmm. During World War I. You know, they had a they had a, a, a virus, they had a virus back in the 1300s called the Black Death. It took out over 75 million people. You need to do your history. You need to do your research. This COVID, this COVID stuff is this stuff is manipulation. Come on. It's to see. It's, Come on. It is to the, the reason why you hear cold COVID coronavirus all the time is because so is a man thinking it's hard, so is, so is he. And so they want you to believe this yeah. mess. Yeah. They want you to believe it. So that you'll get it in your head yeah. and you'll get stressed out. Yeah. And when you get stressed out, that'll bring on your immune system being compromised. Yes, sir. Yeah. And when your immune system is compromised, you're going to get sick. Because right. you yeah. can get anything and yeah, get right. sick. You can get a bad cold and get yeah. sick. You can get anything. That's because you're stressed. Yeah. Some of y'all are economically stressed. And yeah. if you're stressed economically, guess what? Mm -hmm. Guess what? That's going to call for your immune system. Ooh. To get low. You're gonna get sick. Talk to cats. And so you are subject to catch anything. Yeah. Yeah. 
Paul said, preach this word in his seats and now yes, sir. Sir. Get the good news out. Yeah. Draw him to God and he'll draw, draw him to you. 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 you ain't got to worry about Woo. it. I know that's right. You ain't got to worry about it. Talk to me. Come on. I mean, it's in the air. Yeah. Come on, dog. It's in there. It's in your head. Yeah. It's in your face. Yeah. Yeah, well, well. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> we can't get away from it. Yeah. I'm just saying. It's yeah. everywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's in your house. Yeah. You gotta open up your door. It's in your house. <laughs> it's in your bathroom when you go sit on the toilet. <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> you gonna get away from it. I mean. <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> the Lord has blessed. I thank God for a right mind, and I thank Amen. God for shining the light on the deception. But you have to see it for yourself. The deception, the deception is in our face. Um, this coronavirus is coming from something else because it's really 5G is killing everybody. If you notice these towers they're putting up, notice your neighborhoods, notice the change of your neighborhoods when you start seeing these 5G towers come up. They put them up, them up everywhere. Listen. This is what y'all probably didn't realize. Y'all know a rocket just launched just last week, yeah, right? It shot out almost 30 satellites. Guess what the satellites gonna contain? The 5G. People don't know about that. They think that rocket was sitting in the air so that it could give supplies to the space stations up there, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It sent satellites out. Yeah. Almost 30 satellites out. They're going to have the 5G in them joints. Yes, sir. They get ready to hit you with the 5G. Yes, sir. We got at least three where we live at. We got three that we can see. We can personally see wow. three 5G poles up where we live at, out there where we live at. They put them out everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is look around. Look around in your neighborhoods. Your neighborhood is going to change. The landscape of your neighborhood is going to change, though, because you're going to put them 5G signs up. Y'all know they got a 6G out already, don't you? Five G. Oh, they got a six G out already. They going up or not? Yeah, they going up or not. <laughs> and so, listen. Fear the Lord. That's right. And shun from evil. Yes, sir. Matthew's account and Luke's account says, "Don't fear the one who can destroy the body, but fear the one who can destroy the body and the soul in the hell." That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So come on, stand to your feet. I'm done. Amen. 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 Amen.